Shares of Lyft are up around 80 percent since David Risher took the helm almost a year ago. They're still underperforming Uber during that time frame, which has seen shares more than double since last April. But over the last three months, a different story. Shares up nearly 40 percent, beating those of Uber. Joining me to discuss his first year at the helm and his renewed focus on the core business is David Risher, CEO of Lyft. David, great to see you at One Market, feeling a little homesick. Um, Deirdre, it's not the same without you. Where are you? <laughs> it's also the location. We sat down for our first interview right when you took this job right. a year ago. My first question to you was what would you do first as Lyft CEO to turn things around? You said you wanted to be competitive again. How have you been? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? We've been growing every quarter. So up 10 percent, 17 percent, 20 percent, 26 percent. And that kind of growth is because our customers, our riders and our drivers are loving what we've done. So I'm, I'm thrilled to see that. We've got a lot more to do, but I'm super excited about the first year. In terms of market share, have you guys been able to strengthen your position? And part of that was making Lyft more competitive against your rival Uber in terms of pricing, in terms of driver supply. Any metrics you can share on that front? I mean, look, when I started, you know, I said we weren't really going to focus just on market share. I think we were maybe in the high 20s at that point. Now we're sort of in the low 30s. My bigger focus is on, you know, women plus connect, online pickup promise at the airport, you know, 70 percent driver earnings guarantee. These are the types of things, the features and the services, as well as good pricing, fast pickups that drive our, you know, our share and our business every single day. When riders do better, when drivers do better, we do better. Right. And what you've kind of described has been your overarching strategy of doubling down on your core, which yeah. is ride sharing, new products and features. We have a graphic we can show you, our audience, um, all the things that you've implemented. That's also helped you and the company get closer to break even gap profitability. Does that continue? Do you continue to make that the priority in year two? Or do you start to think about investment again, expanding beyond the core? You know, so... My thesis is customer obsession is what drives profitable growth. Customer obsession drives profitable growth. And so the more we obsess over our riders, the more we obsess over our drivers, the more we're going to grow. And I love seeing the growth we've got. We've got good growth in the United States. We actually are seeing we're just sort of on a tear in Canada, which is wonderful to see. Uh, that's an area of expansion for us. So that'll be the sort of investment we make is continuing to invest in products and services that drive more loyalty, drive more preference uh, for Lyft. Right. So, David, today we're watching markets sell off on hotter than expected CPI data. What are you seeing from your customer, the Lyft riders? Are they taking on more or less rides, premium or lower priced shared rides? Yeah. So we're in a quiet period right now, which, you know, frustrates me. It's not, <laughs> it's not my go to place. So I can't say too much about it. But what I can tell you is um, I like what I see. You know, we, we for example, this past weekend, Eclipse weekend, uh, it was a big deal for us, right? You had millions of people mm -hmm. across the United States, you know, kind of moving into position. Um, love that. We have more drivers than we've had, I think, in the company's history, certainly uh, since pre-COVID. We're seeing really good growth. So not seeing a lot uh, to worry about there, actually nothing okay. at all. But to be honest, if people are worried about pricing, we've got a great product called Wait and Save. allows you to save a little bit of money uh, if you want to. But that's uh, haven't ever really seen anything to worry about. Okay, and David, talk a little bit about supply because I know that this is just such an important part of the equation that as riders we don't always yeah. get to see, but that's been a fierce competition just in this industry of ride sharing. How have you been able to boost Lyft supply? So I love that you're asking this question. And let me be super clear. When we talk about supply, which sounds sort of technical, we're talking about how many drivers choose us every single day. We have over a million drivers on their platform in the last year, which is amazing, really significant part of the economy, actually. And they make, by the way, about 30 bucks an hour after their uh, expenses. That's sort of after, um, you know, gas and maintenance and so forth, per engaged hour when they're on the platform. So the first most important thing is you've got to make sure the drivers are paid fairly. And that's what we did when we instituted something called the 70 percent earnings guarantee, which means we'll always take they'll always make at least 70 percent of what a rider pays after certain fees. So when you ask about driver supply, you're really asking, you know, are we doing a good job attracting drivers, mm -hmm. retaining drivers? And again, we have more drivers than we've ever had. So it's a, it's a great story, and I'm super proud of it. 